All right, so let's start. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to our class. Today is astronomy class, okay? And for today's lesson, we'll be studying about the Earth, the, mo the Moon, and the Sun, right? The Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. And for the first lesson, we will have first the motion of the Earth, okay? The motion of the Earth. Now, let's, just, uh, let's start with this um, warm-up, okay? Now, please write a fact that you know about the Earth, the Moon, or the Sun on the chat box, please. Uh, at least one fact. Okay, our truth about the moon, the earth, or the sun. Okay, can you type on the chat box, please? Um, a sentence, a fact about the earth, the moon, and the sun. Okay, uh, Piraya said here. Okay, biggest what? What is you ask now? Hmm? Uh, please write a fact, a fact or something, uh, something that you know about the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. Biggest uh, what, Piraya? Biggest Alina? Okay, so I can see here, a Sun is the biggest uh, what? Star in the solar system, is that what you mean? Sun is hot. Okay. How do you know? How do you know uh, tan? <laughs> okay. Earth is bigger than the moon. <laughs> that, that, that's correct, Mr. Pooh. Sun is bigger than the moon and earth. Really? <laughs> that is correct. Okay. Moon orbit around the earth and the earth orbits around the sun. Okay. That's interesting, huh? That's a good fact, Plume. Neil Armstrong, oh, what's that? First step on the moon. Moon is the member of the planet, a member of the family, Chai, the biggest. Earth is green and blue, Ka. <laughs> no. Earth is, uh, all right. Uh, if you're going to look at the outer space, all right, it's green and blue because of the water, all right? Moon run around the earth. Okay, moon is running. Okay, moon is running around the earth. Sun is the center of the solar system, right? Fund absent. <laughs> All right, earth is the third planet from the sun. Moon is, moon is revolving around the sun. Earth is the one of the planet that have living things, all right? That is correct, all right? Thank you so much for participating. I uh, At least I know a lot, okay? I, I I mean, I know a lot. That means you know a lot, my child, me, okay? It means you know a lot. Thank you so much. The sun and the moon and earth are not the same size. True, Mudanoi, that is correct, all right? So it means that you know a lot about the three celestial bodies or objects. Okay, including the earth. Okay, so uh, for today's lesson, as I have said, we will just focus on uh, the motion of the earth called rotation, revolution, and precision. All right, and then also we're going to explain the effects of the motions of the uh, on earth. Okay, such as what is the result of rotation, revolution, and precision on the earth itself. All right. So are you ready? Let's start now. Let's start first with rotation. Okay, rotation. Okay, so you can see here uh, the two main motions of Earth are rotation and revolution. What is the difference? When we say rotation, uh, it is the turning or the spinning of a body on its axis, all right? On its axis. So in this case, um, if the Earth has an invisible axis, it is rotating on its own axis. Whereas revolution, when I say revolution, it is the motion of a body, all right? Such as a planet or moon along a path around some point in space okay what do you call that path that is called an orbit all right it's called an orbit okay for example the earth revolves around the sun 
and the moon revolves around the earth. Okay, so that's the revolution. Okay. Earth also has another very slow motion known as precision. Okay, have you heard about this one? Precision. So aside from a rotation and revolution, there is a, another motion. It's called precision. Okay, precision is the slight. Okay, very slow motion. Okay, very slow movement. Slight movement over a period of 26,000 years. Okay, so this is a period or of about 26,000 years of the Earth's axis. Okay, very, 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 very slow. Right? So let us take them one by one. And what are the effects of these three kinds of motion on the Earth itself? Right? So first is rotation. Right? Rotation. Okay, what do you think is the result of the Earth's rotation? Or what is the effect of rotation on, effect, uh, on Earth? Anyone? Pang. Okay, where, where Pang? No, here, Pang. Don't worry, I am recording the video. You can watch again later. Okay. Uh, again, everyone, uh, I'm asking what is the result of the Earth's rotation on the on Earth itself? Okay. Or uh, I mean, what is the effect of rotation on Earth? Do you know what is the result of Earth's rotation? Anyone? Okay. So what's this? This is this. All right, Floyd, that is correct. Okay, very good. Huh? So the result of the Earth's rotation on its own axis, as you can see here on the illustration, the one is brighter and the other, uh, other side is darker. Okay, this is because the main results of the Earth's rotation are day and night. Okay, day and night, right? Earth's rotation has become a standard method, okay? It is a standard method of measuring time because it is so dependable and easy to use, right? It is, you can depend on, you can depend on and it's very easy to use. Now, question, another question. How long is a single rotation of the earth? How long is that? How long is a single rotation? Plume, hello, Plume. Yes. How long is a single rotation? Piraya has an answer. That's correct, Piraya. Plume, how long is a single rota rotation? Rotation, Floyd. Again, please. One day. One day. Okay, that is correct. And one day. Okay, one day is 24 hours. Okay, 24 hours. Right? My child, my child that, that, that days, that's too long, Floyd. Uh, Okay, so each rotation, if it is day and night, therefore it's 24 hours because it's one day according to Plume. Okay, next. Another fact about that is that... Okay, so we have here... Next slide. We can measure the Earth's rotation in two ways. Okay, we can measure the Earth's rotation in, in two ways. Therefore, we have two kinds of uh, days, okay? We have two kinds of days. Uh, the first one uh, is easier. Uh, a lot of us know this one, but uh, the other one is um, which does, uh, more difficult and seldom used by ordinary people. Okay, it can uh, only used by um, scientists, okay? So we have here, the first one is called, uh, which is most familiar, we call this the mean solar day, okay? Mean solar day. What is this? When I say mean solar day, the time interval from one noon, from one noon to the next, okay? Which averages about 24 hours. Let's say one noon today and the noon on another day, which is tomorrow, uh, that is equivalent to 24 hours. Okay, now question, what is the position of the sun at noon? What is the position of the sun at noon? Mr. Pooh, number nine. 
what is the position of the sun at noon time? Mr. Pu. Hello, Mr. Pu. Uh, hello. What is the position of the sun at noon? Noon. Above head. Above head. All right. That is correct. Okay. Above head. Okay. So this is noon is the time when the sun has reached its zenith. Okay. When I say zenith, that is here above head, according to Mr. Pu. This is the highest point in the sky. Okay. When you look up on the sky, this is the highest point. Okay. We call that as the zenith. Okay. The zenith. Okay. Above head. Okay. So that is one way of um, the Earth's rotation. Now, how do we measure the Earth's rotation? Another one, the next one is called the side real day. All right. Side real day day this is number two okay what does it mean it is the time it takes for earth to make one complete rotation okay on its axis 360 degrees on each uh, its axis with respect to a star other than our sun okay so in this case for the sidereal d day it's not just the sun which is the basis okay they also look at other far away stars okay other far away stars okay the side real day is measured by the time required for a star to reappear at the identical position in the sky where it was observed the day before okay what does that mean let's say for example at day one okay there's a distant star in this position let's say there is a star in this position at day one and then it makes a rotation, 365 rotation at day one. It makes one day, right? One day. And then for day two, okay, uh, for day one, the sun is at this point, okay? At this point, okay, at noon. But at day two, when, when the earth rotates and on this side returns to its original position, okay? on the stars here, uh, far away star, its uh, position with respect to the sun is now here. Okay, it's now here. And not on the Y location. Okay, and not on the Y location. As you can see here, it is not uh, the same as uh, sun's noon during day one. Okay, it uh, is different. Okay, it is a, a degree different. All right, that is what we mean by side real day. What happened is that, okay, what happened is that the side real day has a period of about 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds. Okay, 56 at uh, 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds, uh, which is almost four minutes shorter than the mean solar day, okay? So the side real day is about or almost four minutes shorter than the mean solar day, okay? It means that it's earlier, all right? It's earlier, uh, about four minutes earlier, the side real day. The difference result, okay, why is there a difference? Because the direction to distant stars barely changes, because of the Earth's slow revolution along its orbit. Okay, this is because the, the Earth revolves slowly around the Sun. So therefore, uh, if you're going to look at it uh, in a side real day measurement, it's a bit uh, different. Okay, the direction to the Sun, on the other hand, changes by almost one degree each day. All right, this one degree change each day in the uh, inside real time noon occurs four minutes earlier each day right it's it occurs four minutes earlier right therefore if you're going to count uh if you're going to count the four minutes okay the four minutes uh, after six months uh, which is half a year, right? Six months, half a year. Uh, noon will occur at midnight. Okay, it will occur at midnight. 
Okay, don't be confused. Okay, students, we're talking about side real day. Okay, my chai, the, 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 the original or the ordinary one. Now, this is difficult because this one is being used by only astronomers or scientists. Okay, astronomers use this one side real time because the stars appear in the same position in the sky every 24 side real hours. Okay. Uh, in other words, they are using other stars as the basis other than the sun. Okay. The sun is not the basis, but the other stars. All right. And usually an observatory will begin its side real day when the position on the spring equinox is directly overhead, all right? When the position of the sun ray is directly overhead, all right? So this is the difference. There's, those are two types of measure of the day, okay? Again, the first one is side real time, and the other one is called side real time, and the other one is called mean solar day, all right? Mean solar day and side real time okay that is all about rotation okay next let us proceed with the next one revolution okay what is revolution okay question does the earth revolve around the sun in perfect circular pattern is it a perfect circular pattern a prime Hello, Prim. Can you turn your mic on, please? Do you yes. have any idea? Does the Earth revolve around the sun in a perfectly circular pattern? Uh, maybe no. Maybe no. All right. So you have an idea. Why, why do you think or what do you think is the pattern, if not a uh, perfectly circular pattern? What is it called? Not, not, so, not perfect circle. So okay. Not or, so. All right. Like the shape of an egg, Jamaica. Yes. Okay, like the shape of an egg. Okay, it's not a perfect circle. Okay, uh, but close to that. Okay, it's uh, the shape of an egg. We call that elliptical. Okay, the Earth revolves around the Sun in an elliptical, elliptical orbit. Okay, my child, perfect circle. Okay, at an average speed of 107,000 kilometers per hour, okay? Now, its average distance from the sun is about 150 kilometers, okay? From the sun to this one is average. So we're talking about the average, okay? But because its orbit is an ellipse, Earth's distance from the sun varies, okay? Because it's an ellipse, my child, perfect circle, sometimes... The Earth is closer to the Sun, and sometimes the Earth is farther to the Sun, right? Okay, now, in here, we have two positions, okay? In, in one year, we have this uh, location of the Earth, okay, from the Sun, aphelion and perihelion, okay? What is the difference, as you can see here? on the illustration. Where is Baimon? Hello, Baimon. What is the difference between aphelion and perihelion here? Baimon? Hello, Baimon. Baimon is not here. How about Newfan? Hello, Newfan. Hello, Newfan. Yes. Okay, Newfan. Can you see the illustration here for revolution? Um, aphelion and perihelion. Can you see this? Yes. All right. And you find these are two locations of the Earth from the Sun. Okay. What can you say about these two? Can you differentiate aphelion and perihelion? Uh, fastest away location. Uh, which one? Um, I think. A billion is when the earth is closer or farther? Farther. Farther away. And perihelion, what about perihelion? It's when? Near. Okay, when the earth is near or nearest or closest to 
the sun. All right. Thank you so much, new, new fun. That is correct. Okay. So these are two locations of the earth in a year. Okay. Sometimes in one year, um, the earth is very far from the sun that we call that as a pillion. And when the sun is closest to the sun, we call that as perihelion. Okay. Now, in here, aphelion and perihelion, it says that in here, the speed of the Earth's revolution, okay, the speed of the Earth's revolution increases as it gets closer to the sun, okay, because it's uh, closer to the sun, the gravity, the pull of gravity is uh, um, higher, it increases, and therefore, it makes the Earth accelerate uh, faster, okay? The speed of the Earth increases when they are in here, okay? Perihelion, okay? Take note of that, please. Next, at perihelion, the Earth is closest to the Sun, about 147 million kilometers away, okay? And perihelion occurs about January 3, each year, all right? So perihelion, it occurs about uh, January 3, each year. Whereas aphelion, Earth is farthest from the sun, okay? About 152 million kilometers away. And aphelion occurs about July 4, okay? July 4, okay? Perihelion, January 3, and a billion about July 4. Okay, so Earth is farthest from the sun in July and closest to the sun in January. Okay, take note of that. All right, next one. Next is about revolution. Uh, we have here uh, because of the Earth's annual movement, okay, annual movement around the sun, meaning revolution, okay, annual movement around the sun, meaning revolution, each day the sun appears to be displaced among the constellations at a distance uh, equal to about twice its width. Okay, what do you mean by that? Uh, what is constellation, by the way? What is a constellation? Uh, where is Pang? Hello, Pang. What is a constellation, Pang? Adja. Constellation. Okay. What is a constellation? Do you have any idea what a constellation is? Constellation is? What's an idea? What, what is constellation? It is? All right. So when we say constellations, these yeah. are yes, yes. Like a like a group group of star. All right. Perfect. That is correct. Okay. So when we say constellations, these are groups of stars. Okay. So when we say uh, here, uh, it means that in here. The sun appears to be displaced among the constellation. Okay, it means that uh, it appears to be sometimes the Earth is misplaced or displaced. It means that it is not on its original uh, position or location. Okay, now what happens is that the apparent annual path, okay, of the sun against the backdrop of the celestial sphere is called ecliptic okay ecliptic this one okay it means that this is the apparent annual path okay this is what uh, the sun follows okay apparent meaning it seems okay as we see them on earth all right we call that as ecliptic okay generally the planets and the moon travel in the uh, in nearly the same plane as the Earth. And what is that plane? This one, uh, the light green. What's this? Is this light green or tangerine? What color is this? Okay, they, they follow this uh, almost the same plane. Okay, in other words, uh, their path on the celestial sphere lie near the ecliptic. Okay, the planets lie near this line. Okay, ecliptic. Next, another one. 
The imaginary plane that connects the Earth orbit with the celestial sphere is called the plane of the ecliptic. Which one is that? This one, the surface, okay? This, uh, this sphere here, the surface, right? We call that as the plane of the ecliptic, okay? From the reference plane, Earth's axis rotation is tilted about 23.5 degrees. Okay, if you're going to look at that, if this one is the e ecliptic or the plane of ecliptic, the Earth's uh, plane of the equator, this one, uh, blue, they are tilted at about 23.5 degrees. Okay, they are tilted at about 23.5 degrees, meaning 23 and one half degrees. Okay, because of this tilt, okay, the apparent path of the sun and the celestial equator intersect each other at an angle of 23.5 degrees. Okay, and this tilt gives us the heating of the earth. Okay, it becomes a hot, uh, hotter. And so, therefore, some, some part of the earth becomes hotter. And so, therefore, it gives us the seasons, right? The tilting of the earth gives us the season. Okay, so this angle, 23.5 degrees, is very important to earth's inhabitant, meaning to us people, okay? Because of the inclination of the earth's axis to the plane of the ecliptic, the earth has its yearly cycle or season okay that is the most important result or effect of the tilting okay which is 23.5 degrees okay between the plane of the ecliptic and the plane of the equator okay uh, that's why if you're going to see uh the 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 axis it's not uh straight upward semicap it's uh tilted right next Next one here is when the apparent position of the sun is plotted on the celestial sphere over a period of a year's time, its path intersects celestial equator at two points. Okay, they will meet at two points depending on what the whether the sun is at perihelion or aphelion. All right, farther or closer from the sun. Okay, from a northern hemisphere's point of view, these intersections are called the equinox okay and we have two types of equinox spring and autumn okay spring is between march 20 or 21 and autumn equinox is between september 22 or 23 okay when we say equinox what do you mean by that equinox this is the time or date twice it each years okay two times in one year at which the sun crosses the celestial equator when the day and night are of approximately equal okay meaning that the the length of night is equal to the length of day okay we call that equinox okay and they they happen twice a year okay one is in september and the one is in march okay next another one aside from equinox we also have what we call solstice okay so this one is equinox and the other one is solstice okay we also have two times uh, two types okay on january 21 or 22 the date of the sun uh, summer solstice the sun appears 23.5 degrees north of the celestial equators uh, equator okay and another one Six months later, on December 21 to 22, the date of the winter solstice, okay? It means that the sun appears 23.5 degrees south of the celestial equator, right? Okay, you understand? What does it mean? It means that either of the two times of the year during uh, when the sun is farthest from the equator or nearest from the equator, okay? The summer solstice has the longest days and the winter solstice has the shortest days, okay? The summer solstice, solstice has the longest days and the winter solstice has the shortest days, right? 
Next, that is about revolution. Okay, another one is precision. What is precision? Okay, so there's a third and very slow movement of the earth. Okay, it is called precision. Okay, uh, we almost uh, cannot notice this one because this one is very slow motion. Okay, earth's axis maintains approximately the same angle of tilt. And, but the direction in which the axis points continually changes. As a result, the axis traces a circle on the sky. Okay, this one. Okay, we call this as the precision. Okay, it means that uh, aside from its rotation, it is also moving very, very slowly at this direction. All right, at this direction, very, very slowly. Is that 26,000 years? Okay. Now, this movement is very, very similar to the wobble of a spinning top on here. At the present time, the axis points toward the bright star Polaris. Okay, the axis in here, it points to the brightest star. We call them as the North Star or Polaris, right? Polaris. In the year 14,000, it will point toward the bright star Vega, which will then become the North Star, okay? Because it will tilt again, okay? 14,000 years. The period of precision uh, is about 26,000 years. By the year uh, 28,000, Polaris will again, uh, will once again be the North Star, okay? So because they are tilting, okay? Very, very slowly, okay? Very slowly, about 26,000 years, okay? Now, precision has only minor effect okay, on the season because the angle of tilt changes only slightly. In other words, precision has no effect on the season. Okay? It only affects on how the stars appear on the sky. Understand? No, no effect on the season. It only affects on how the stars appear on the sky. Right? That is, the, uh, that is how uh, precision affects uh, the earth, okay? All right. So next is, we have the next one. The position of the season, right? Uh, to move slightly it's here among the stars. Okay. 